You know, this morning I woke up, give thanks unto the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But I have to, I have to be honest with you, brethren, sisters, I'm troubled today. There are people I love that are struggling. And um, there are those of us who seek to do right by the Lord according to the scriptures. This is my uh, Schofield Oxford 1917 edition. This is the one that I keep in the, my living room. Um, it's very impromptu. But I'm kind of troubled today. Yesterday was a beautiful day, but I know that there are lots of people who are struggling right now. And um, I think it's important for us to remember a few things. That's why, that's why this, uh, <laughs> Lord willing, um, this is why this video is being done. From those who are being tempted to seek things in others that maybe they should not seek, but be very cautious. And also those who are picking sides. Those who are having, oh, such trouble in their homes. Very troubled this morning. It's your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, and turn into your King James scriptures to Exodus chapter 32. Backstory. God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. Okay, instruction and in righteousness again for us today. The Lord has taken us out of Egypt, the world, out from under the headship, the um, king of this world, Pharaoh, Satan. He's guiding us onto the promised land, heaven, to ever be with the Lord. And Moses goes up onto Mount Sinai and the Lord gives him the Ten Commandments on two tables of stone. And he's up there for a while. You, most of you know this, this uh, passage of scripture. You ought to. Exodus chapter 32. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. <coughs> and Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them on me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Molten calf, singular. These be thy gods, plural, at the very least. Hmm. You don't say. Let's continue. <coughs> and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation. O oh Lord, please forgive me for what I have done, this foolishness that I have done in making... Oh, no, it doesn't say that, does it? 
<laughs> and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow, and offered burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink, and rose up to play, fool around, mindless entertainment, to enjoy revelry, and banqueting, and rioting, and so on and so forth. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed it unto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. Hey, look at me, look at me, look at me, come on, think about this. Sit your butt down and think about this. Right now, today, the year of our Lord, 2020, September the 25th, is there something getting in the way of you and the Lord? You know, our Lord is a jealous God. He made you and me for to have a relationship with him. To love him. He has every right to be jealous when you're giving your affections to something other than himself. Is something taking the place that rightly belongs unto our Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. just shut up. Shut up. You know who makes excuses? Lost people. Let's continue this. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out, to slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from off from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath. Thy fierce wrath. He's going to kill him. And repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Moses made intercession for these people who had done very wickedly, who made a molten calf and worshipped them and said, these are the gods, plural at the very least, that brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Lord have had every right, has every right, to smite these people down, get rid of them. But see, Moses shoes his heart as an intercessor. 
What would have happened if Moses was like, yeah, amen, Lord, go do it. Personally, I think the Lord would have been even more displeased with Moses for that. Verse 15, And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both their sides. On the one side and on the other were they written. And the tables were the work of God, <laughs> the originals. And the writing was the writing of God graven upon the tables. Yeah, these are the originals, boy. <clears throat> and when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery. Neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome. But the noise of them that sing do I hear. Moses was uh, pretty upset. Not as upset as the Lord was. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hand and break them beneath the mount. There's the originals for you. Moses comes down like... Because what the people were doing was totally contrary on to those Ten Commandments, which the Lord, with his own hand, wrote for the children of Israel. And he took the calf which they had made, and burnt it in the fire, and ground it to powder, and strawed it upon the water, and made the children of Israel drink of it. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee, that thou hast brought so great a, a sin upon them? <laughs> and Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. The woman that thou gavest me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. For they said unto me, Make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. And he said unto them, and I said unto them, excuse me, whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me, then I cast it in the fire, and there came out this calf. Oh, I've ducked up. <laughs> um, and unbeknownst to him, there came out a calf. Uh, go back. Verses uh, 3 and 4. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool. <laughs> After he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So they gave it me, back in verse 24, then I cast it in the fire and whoop! And there came out this calf. In all seriousness, don't you think Aaron could have done a little bit better than that? <laughs> Seriously? Let's continue. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies, 
Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let them come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And there fell of the people that day about three thousand men. For Moses said, for Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. Yeah, by not killing them all. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto the Lord. Peradventure, I shall make an atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, his people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. Look, if you won't forgive them, then get, get me out of here. Get me out of here. How's that for a little intercession? You ever pray like that? You ever pray like that for someone, huh? My brother in Canada, Brother Matthew Melanson, is basically bedridden. He has good days and bad days. Lord, if it would mean that he could have a day of no pain, give it to me so that he could have relief. Give unto me what my brother suffers with and struggles with. That he may have relief. How many of you pray like that? For the brethren. Hmm? And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Therefore now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, mine angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron made. Plagued the people. Look at verse 26. Who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? They were brought out of something of great affliction, great bondage, servitude to the Egyptians. And how quickly, how quickly how quickly did they forget? Luke chapter 7, verses 36 on to verse 50. Luke chapter 7, excuse me, Luke chapter 7, verses 36 on to verse 50. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. 
And behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Wouldn't even be in front of him, but from behind. The Pharisee brought Jesus to his house. Oh, look at me. Now the Pharisee which had bidden him, now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would, ha would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. She's a sinner. He's a prophet. Look, look at this. If he knew, if he were a prophet, who? And Jesus answering said unto him, Shimon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, <clears throat> Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Shimon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, that being Jesus, Thou hast rightly judged. He knew what to say. He knew the right answer. How do you know that's how it was his train of thought? Because he knew what to say? That it came from here? Not here? I suppose that he to whom he forgave much, gave most, excuse me. I suppose the one who you had forgiven the most. Now think about that. Where'd that come from? Didn't come from his heart. Didn't come from a broken or contrite heart, did it? Came purely from his head because he knew what to say. And he knew with what uh, the Lord had said unto him, he thought he knew what he wanted him to hear. And he turned to the woman and said unto Shimon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. Greeting in Israel, which still is practiced today. Hug, kiss on the one cheek, kiss on the other cheek. A form of greeting, which is still practiced in Israel today. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? Now, look at that rationale. 
Look at that rationale. The Lord right there cut these guys right down to pieces because they were self-righteous. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And then they're like, who is this? They didn't get it. See. And he said unto the woman, thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. You know, the children of Israel, when they were brought out, they, they kind of got something, didn't they? It was a constant problem with them. You read the Torah yourself. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. The Lord has forgiven me of all my sins. And I deserve to go to hell for those sins. I personally have destroyed marriages as a lost man. Committed unspeakable acts as a lost man. I shouldn't even be looking at you right now. I should have, I should have AIDS. I shouldn't even be looking at you now. But the Lord has forgiven me of all of that. I know what the Lord has saved me from. Hell. And his wrath. Tell me something, brother, sister. Have you forgotten that? Hey, 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 hey. Before you glibly, like, of course I remember that, yeah? Really? 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 Have any of you uh, left your first love? Again, is there something that is replacing Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, as numero uno in your life? What might that be? And what are you going to tell him when you have to be before him at the judgment seat of Christ. I was talking with a brother last night, and um, you know how in the scriptures it says John fell down at his feet as dead, right? It's going to be a, going to be pretty terrifying. If anyone says it's going to be a hop, skipping and jump, and a woo-hoo-hoo, um, they have some issues they need to sort out. But imagine this, roll this around in your head. Those of us in the Church of the Living God, once we get at the judgment seat of Christ, we know it's going to be a, oh boy, and get our faces on the ground. Fear. What if, just think about this, what if the Lord takes you by your head And makes you look him in the eye. <sighs> Think about that. At the judgment seat of Christ. All your little secret things that you have done as a saved man or a sister. Those behind you, those in front of you, are all going to know about it. Yeah, you're going to have your face down on the ground at the judgment seat of Christ. What if, though, he 
he makes you look him right in the eye. God, the Father, the creator of heaven and earth, our Lord Jesus Christ, makes you look him in the eye. What do you got to say for yourself? <laughs> Yeah, roll that around in your basket case for a little bit. I mean, again, brethren, sisters, it's going to be a terrifying thing at the judgment seat of Christ. And again, if someone is telling you that it's going to be this happy-go-lucky, sugar flowery, saccharine sweet, get 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 those people away from you. Okay, uh, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth, okay? Um, if ever there is anything so steeped in reality, it's this, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Okay? What? type of fear ought that to put into you? And some of you are still messing around. Keep that, keep that thought in your head. You're down on your face. Can't get any lower. Before our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, at the judgment seat, to see what rewards are going to abide the fire. <clears throat> Makes you look them in the eye. Eye to eye. What you got to say for yourself? Oh, oh, oh boy. I, I, I see. I don't know about you. That change my shorts, boy. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Chapter three. Verses 1 on to verse 9. I did a video talking about this, I think maybe two years ago, but And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. Remember what we re read in uh, Exodus chapter, what was it, 33? 32 or 33, verse 26. Who is on the Lord's side? For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am, of a, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. Okay, look at that. Even as the Lord gave to every man. Who is on the Lord's side? I have planted. Apollos watered. And I gave the increase. Oh, I know you feel me. <laughs> 
I know. I know you feel me. Good. Good. But God gave the increase. But God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase, who is on the Lord's side. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive of his own re and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. And it's not these stupid church buildings. Get away from those. 501c3 government controlled church buildings. I was asked this Tuesday. Um, I, I told people that I, I, this is what I do. And I was asked by a woman who was a little forceful with it. Like, well, where do you send these people? Uh, to the scriptures, you know, to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, um, church is the body, not the people. Or is, the, excuse me, church is the body, the people, not the buildings. I, mean, I beg your pardon for that. It's not a building. It's the people, the body. Oh, we know that. Yeah, no, you don't. Then why are you so, uh, why are people so concerned with getting them to congregate to a building and then talk to you about tithing. It's all about getting you to the building, right? Oh, to make disciples? What kind of disciples are you making? What kind of disciples are you making? Who's on the Lord's side? Listen, brethren, there are many people out there who I truly love. And I, I understand some of you have a, have struggles with ha having a grown man say to another grown man that they love them. Uh, if you're of the church of the living God, the body of Christ, you're truly saved more than again, you know, part of the church of the living God, you're my brother. That means that you and I have the same father, the Lord Jesus Christ. I might not like some of the things you do say whatever but you're my brother I love you you see I don't have a problem showing affection onto my brothers and sisters some of you do I get it and incidentally if that bothers you that I'm like that with you uh, in conversation or whatever simple uh, hey Brad I know, I know how you feel. I, I'm a little uncomfortable. Could you? Not? Okay, fine. That's all you gotta say. I'll, I'll, I'll take a page from my beloved brother Alexander. I ain't changed my mind. Yeah. Uh, where do, where, where do you send them? Um, to the Lord Jesus Christ through the Scriptures. Okay, through the Scriptures. Oh, one second, one second, okay? Okay, sorry about that. Uh, sometimes the where to find them, uh, these uh, certain verses elude me, so I had to look. Where do you send these people? So that they may grow, so that they may be built up. The, um, the idea is behind that, that they, they were like, um, you ought to send them to a church building. Chapter and verse, please. 
uh, is this what this means? Uh, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 on to verse 30. Come unto the church building, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and they will give you rest. Take their tithes upon you, and learn from them, for they are meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls, for their yoke is easy. And their burden is light. Is that what that says? No. No. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Lord intervened in that moment, by the way, on Tuesday, when I was talking to, this, uh, talking to these people, and this woman came up to me about that. Because that could have gotten ugly very quickly. But uh, a brother called me, and I went and had fellowship with him, and the um, Lord is like, oh, Brad, Brad, don't, don't. Who's on the Lord's side? Hmm? Who's on the Lord's side? Look, I, I, like I said, I love many of you, my brothers and sisters. But see, I'm on the Lord's side. This is the standard. This, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. This. And if my brother and sister are, um, you know, that I know of, at least, walking in accordance with the scriptures. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If not, brother, sister, we need to talk. And hey, same goes with you. If I'm not speaking unto the church of the living God, not you Jesuit heretics, you guys don't count. Thank you. I'm accountable to the body of Christ, the church of the living God, not people in a church building who are there for their entertainment. 501c3, got to give the tithes, right? Yeah. Yeah. And also too, brethren, we have to remember something in Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, <clears throat> verses 3 on to verse 12. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Um, one of the most humble men that I have ever met. Is that sweet brother from Scotland. One of the most humble men that I've ever met. Sweet brother from Canada. I learned from you two guys. And also I got a threshing machine, <laughs> threshing instrument that helps, of course.
For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophecy, according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be above dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, and honor preferring one another. Self-sacrifice, charity. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope. We're going to get out of here soon. Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Continuing instant prayer. How many of you have come across a moment in your life, in your walk, when you have to stop everything you're doing and be like, I got to pray. Or do you wait till you have an opportune moment? And do you hold on? Who's on the Lord's side? Are you being a little carnal? Are you choosing the sides of men? Not the scriptures. Hey, what's taking the Lord's place is number one. Oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta. Shut up. Shut up. I love you. Shut up. What's taking the Lord's place? Anyway, uh, brothers, sisters, I love you. Um, there may be another. There may be another video today. This was just something as I'm sitting here, um, you know, just thinking. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff going on up here. Lots of stuff down here. <laughs> uh, turn in the scriptures to Revelation. Chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 7. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven can golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 you're looking right at that, I know you are. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Thy first love. Who's your first love? Well, 
Well, the Lord is my first love, but I got to do this and I need this. I, 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 I. Uh -huh. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate lifting one above another, you know, the ruler ruling over the laity. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, capital S, saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of of the paradise of God. You know, I've only been saved for 12 years. I've only been saved for 12 years. I, am, I have not been saved for all too long. I know some of you say that but Brad, that's a long time. No, 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 it isn't. In comparisons, you know. And I know he who compares or uh, compares himself with others is not wise. I know that. I know that. And that's a paraphrase. I get that. But um, <clears throat> we run into a lot of trouble when we take our attention away from our first love. And let something get in the way of it. And then we try to justify ourselves because we need this, we need that. What, don't you think the Lord knows what we need better than we know what we think we know we need? My wife struggles with that. I struggle with that. Hi. You struggle with that. You know, before you go off to make rash decisions, before you let your affections be on other matters than where they ought to be, before you start thinking about picking a side, stop, take a time out. Consider who's on the Lord's side. And that means you too. That means me as well. I don't know what in the wide world of sports entertainment um, why this video, but uh, here it is. <laughs> I love you, and I'm praying for so many of you. Oh, uh, incidentally, um, uh, Brother Landau, if you happen to see this, and you're a busy man, I do plan on contacting you later today, because I, as I understand, you're you're a working man, and you work quite a bit, so, but um, anyway, I love you. Have a blessed day, brothers and sisters in Christ.